marriage. Mm. So we've, we've now got beyond the idea of a point geometry that the GIS system kind of gives you. Um, so we've got these network connections, but they're still static. Mm-hmm. And so we were also interested in precisely what you're talking about, how one place is small and becomes big. Right? So, so change and movement, how space moves, <laughs> exactly. So we developed um, a platform for reading the text spatially. Mm -hmm. So you could read through the text, and as you read through the text, you can actually see the places visualizing that bit of the text Mm -hmm. uh, on a map, and you see how they change and move. Mm -hmm. And this was in collaboration with Nick Rabinovitz, who's a a JavaScript developer. And what I really liked about this was that this sits in the browser, it sits in the website. Okay. So you can then... It's a, it's a new way of reading a text, really. Mm-hmm. And this led into the second digital... Which was then exclusively yeah. a digital project, uh, Google Ancient Places. Yeah. And so this uh, was a project with myself, with Leaf. Mm-hmm. I told you he'd turn up again. Okay. Uh, I still haven't got rid of him yet. We'll come back to that. Uh, uh, Eric Kanza, who is the uh, director of Open Context, mm-hmm. which is... Um, an open archaeological data repository uh, at uh, University of uh, California, Berkeley, and Kate Byrne, who is a developer uh, at the Institute of Informatics in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. So again, you get a sense of a collaborative team. Slightly different makeup from the last one, but that's Mm -hmm. because it's much more um, on a development issue. Mm -hmm. And the Google Ancient Places project, we got some money from Google, the Google initial round of Google Digital Humanities Awards, and I think Perseus, again, was successful in that. And our idea was, okay, can we, we've, we've managed to capture place names in a encoded text, so that is to say, not just as plain text, digital text, but mm-hmm. that's already been marked mm-hmm. up in a particular mm-hmm. way, whether that was semi-automated or by hand. Anyway, the, the text was there in Persis, and we got that with one author, we got the place name, we visualised it, okay, that's good. Can we scale that up? Mm-hmm. And, and it was a Google challenge, so can we scale that up to potentially any book yeah. in the Google Works corpus? Right. And so this was the Google Ancient Places project. Uh, so we developed this, um, this method of extracting, um, on a purely automated level, mm-hmm. um, all place names in a text and then visualizing it. Yeah. And so this, uh, and I was particularly interested, of course, in the, in the, the visualization mm-hmm. package. And then we started to go beyond just the simple place uh, uh, page that we had with the mm-hmm. Hestia project, where you had the text in one reading pane, um, you've got the map in mm-hmm. another reading pane, you've got a kind of timeline or book line underneath, and you can simply scroll through, see the text change here as you read through the text, the place is mentioned in this piece mm-hmm. of the text being visualized, moving in and out of focus. Mm-hmm. So precisely what you get is a sense of movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's one that's one kind of platform. But we then were experimenting with different kind of visualization techniques that the digital uh, medium can enable you to do. So you can now have a landing page and you get a snapshot of the spatial breadth and density of all the places. So you get the, you know, let's say, landing page of Herodotus' histories, all the places Herodotus mentioned on a map, Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's a kind of heat map, so the the hotter the symbol, the more times that place is mentioned mm-hmm. in the text, and also a handy cartogram uh, again on the on the right hand side, ranked according to the number of uh, references each place has, mm-hmm. and also where in the book. So you get a, at a glance, you can see oh these places are mentioned most often in Herodotus, and also where. And instantly, again, what was really fascinating, just a very simple point, um, the top place mentioned in Herodotus was Hellas, Greece. Uh But only as you were getting to the end of the narrative, which, of course, when, you know, the stakes are high, when when you're really fighting for Greece, you have it. Yeah, yeah, and almost like a concept of Greece is coming into... Yeah, yeah, exactly, coming into being. And we we could see that. And you can go through all the different other places and then see, you know, where and when they're mentioned. So, of course, this isn't, again, really telling you anything. What What it's doing is drawing attention to patterns that you can then either fit into an existing theories or use to challenge other things. Basically, the job of interpretation. I don't...